Hey, welcome. I want to show you guys how to create this mini task in uh, Among Us, and we're going to show you guys how close we can get to it. It's going to be awesome. But to get started, my name's Mark. I'm Nathan's brother, and I hope you enjoy this video. Let, it, let me know in the comments below if I'm too descriptive or not descriptive enough. You can always watch this video at double speed. I want to make sure to go into enough detail that anybody would be able to recreate this. And so, uh, yeah, I hope you guys follow along, see what we got. Um, let me go ahead and hit play, and we'll show you that it does work like the mini task in Among Us. So the button's rearranged, and if you click them in order, it gives us a pass in the console window and closes the panel. Now, once we have our game more built out, instead of just putting a pass in the uh, console window we're going to actually increment the task list and the progress bar to um, to show that a task has been completed in the actual in-game screen but we have this start button that would open up the game and an exit button to close the panel if you are just done with the task and don't want to don't want to do it anymore as you can see whenever we open this the order changes because the way that it's set up it's random but we actually do this by setting up a grid and changing the button order layout in the children another important key is when you click the wrong button it restarts the game you have back to where you got to click the first button and uh, it will just keep doing that until you have put the guess the buttons or pick the right buttons in order so I'm going to go over what we have in the hierarchy and then I will cover what is in the code. Um, and to get started, you can go ahead, right click UI and select the panel. And then that panel will automatically give you a canvas and, and we named our canvas this number order minigame. And we named the panel minigame panel. For the exit button, I just turned the opacity all the way down to zero because we uh, took this image from Among Us for demonstration purposes how this game works and how it looks like exactly what they would have done but if you're wanting to put this in your own game and uh, you, you probably want to change up the assets a little bit make it look different and maybe add some buttons or take some buttons away so that it's not the exact same as Among Us alright so we have another button well, we have the script attached to the panel, and we'll get into what the script covers, but uh, the exit button references that script, so you always grab the game object that is attached to that into here, and then you go to the function that you want that's from the script, like button order close for the exit button. And for the start game button, we want the panel to open, and so we reference the um, open function call that's going to be in the script. Okay, now let's go to the grid. Um, we renamed this. It was just, we right clicked, create empty, and then we added a component called grid layout group. And you can change any of these settings to see what the manipulation does of them. But, you know, you just want to make sure that it fits in the window that you want it to fit in. If you've got three rows of buttons, then you'll want to, um, you know, increase the size or number of buttons. And then we have a bunch of buttons that also reference the same script on the minigame panel, but they also require a, a digit, like an integer, to be associated with that button. So the first button, I put zero, and one, two, three, and I did that through all the buttons. But I'll show you where that comes into play when we get into the scripts. Uh, I changed the button color to a little bit lighter blue to match what the game looked like, and it, um, it doesn't stand out as bad as just like blank white ones do. Gives it a little more color. And then last but not least, we have an image that I uh, made a glare from Photoshop in. I can show you kind of what it looked like. Uh, I just 
painted some lines and made sure that it lined up in a square by cutting the edges off and then cutting some lines into here. But it was fine to have it be fully white because when we bring it into Unity, we can lower the opacity in Unity and also change the color to a little bit light, uh, lighter blue so that the glare doesn't looks more like it's part of it than it blends in. But I changed the opacity down and you can kind of change it to whatever you think uh, looks good. When you put an image in front of buttons, you got to make sure to turn off this raycast target or it will block your buttons and you won't be able to click them um, in, when the game's running. Uh, before I added all the buttons, I also changed the font type uh, so I didn't have to go through every single one and add the font in later. All right, let's go over the script. We declare an integer next button, and this is what's gonna be checking what button we are on to click. The game object game panel is that panel that we started with, and we're gonna reference that down in the two last functions when we want to set it active to false or true. On close, we set it to false. On open, we set it to true. And it deactivates that entire panel with all its children. So we'll just close it. Deactivates it like that. Okay, and then we have an array of game objects called my objects. And in order to do the array, you need these square brackets after game object. And when you do that, it will show up in your inspector the on the game object that the script's attached to which is our panel and it will show up probably like this and it won't have anything in there at first but you can lock the inspector screen uh, select all the buttons that you want in there which is just these ones in the grid select and drag them into it and it will populate your array for you and it even shows you it even shows you the order of the elements. So element zero, this but is the first button. Element one is the second button, and so on. It just keeps going down the list. Okay, when you drag those in, it means this button is in position a zero, and this button is in position one. So when we run through a for loop and we put i in here, this first time it goes into the for loop it will be zero which is that first position it's element zero it's going to be grabbing that button and it will grab the transform of that button and it will set the sibling index to a, a random number between zero and nine or either through zero and nine And this is what this is what randomizes where the where the numbers are the buttons are uh, because it changes the position in the hierarchy of the children and when so I gets incremented after it runs the first time and I turns into one and so it's now grabbing that uh, element one in the array which is that next button and changes the transform of the sibling index to a different random range um, within the child random range. And because our the children random range, we only have 10 children, we only need to go to zero to nine. So a visual demo of this would be um, like the first button goes through the for loop, it grabs the first button, picks the number, let's say it picks as five, so it'll drag and drop it down here. Well, it doesn't, it just moves it to that position by itself. Um, and because it's a prefab, I can't show you, but it, because I don't want to edit the prefab. But if I duplicate this button, say it got moved down to position um, nine, it would actually be in this position right here. But because we duplicated it, it's actually in position 10. But kind of shows you how the order changes in, in the number setup. Okay, here the button order is where we check what is pressed, what needs to get pressed, and we call uh, 
failed when the wrong button gets pressed. So because we set the net next button equal to zero at the beginning of the game, when the game's on enable, like once that panel gets enabled, this on enable function is going to get called. It's going to set it to zero, change the button's orders. And then uh, once the button's clicked, it sends the number of the button that we put in um, in here. And we did that by dragging the game object script or the game object that had the script attached to it into here, pick the button order function. And when we type in int button here, it expect us, expects the number to be given to the function and that's where you, you type in the number right here. Okay, so when button one is clicked, it's gonna put in a zero and so button will be zero and zero is equal to next button, which is also zero. So we'll enter this if statement and it will increment the next button to equal one. And so uh, the next time a button's clicked, it's going to be looking for one instead of zero. Unless you've failed, then it will restart because the next button gets set to zero. And we call on enable function here to reset the buttons to a different position. And we check for if, if there's a pass, if the button equals nine, then we know that the game's passed, but we also got to put in here that uh, and equals another equals equals uh, next button. So it doesn't automatically close the panel when uh, button equals nine. And there you have it. You, we've coded the little, we've coded this little mini game. Uh, let me know in the comments below if I wasn't descriptive enough or if I was too descriptive. Um, also, if you got any questions on getting it uh, set up, something's not working, let us know. Um, post your code in the comments below, and uh, just let us know. If you thought this video was helpful, please help us out by going to infogamerhub.com and becoming a member where you'll get a bunch of access to helpful Unity packages for your own game development. And um, you'll get more tutorials and instructions on uh, being able to create games.